I'm Chris Morrow, and this is Comic-Con at Home. My home is on a boat behind the San Diego Convention Center, and the panel is Shaman King, then, now, and tomorrow. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi. If you don't mind introducing yourselves and tell us where your home is. Uh, of course. Uh, my name is uh, Ivan Salzer, and I'm the Senior Marketing Director over at Kodansha USA Publishing, uh, and I'm based out of uh, Los Angeles, California. My name is Ben Applegate. I'm the Director of Publishing Services for the Kodansha Comics Print Program, and I'm in uh, Forest Hills, New York, home of uh, Peter Parker. Okay, my name is Misaki Kido. Um, I am a Marketing Director, but also a host of a Kodansha Live, which is a live stream from our YouTube, and uh, I am based in Oakland, California. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me about the panel? How did it go? And yeah. uh, what did you guys talk about? It yeah. blew up. It blew up. <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. No, you broke the were, internet. Yeah. Uh, no, we had a, a, a few technical issues, but uh, Comic-Con was really great in terms of like working with us to, to you know, get the panel video out there and the news in the hands of fans. Uh, some folks were lucky enough to like sort of sneak in and like, uh, uh, tweet out some uh, spoilers for the panel before it got released. But I don't know, I think that, that I thought that, that was great because it was, it was really nice to see the fan reaction uh, for all the Shaman King series coming out. Like there are a lot of people who've been waiting a long time to uh, sort of read the, all of it. Like there are 35 volumes that were originally published but only 32 were released in the States. So to be able to get that opportunity to bring back uh, a beloved series and be able to complete it for the first time in English is kind of an honor. Um, uh, and so we're, we're, we're just happy to be able to share these uh, stories with the fans, uh, including the spinoffs that are gonna be coming out as well. Um, I uh, grew up with Shaman King when I was uh, younger. So uh, this is kind of like a homecoming in some sense to kind of rejoin with all the fans of Shaman King who are like actually still quite active and very vocal too. And we kind of heard their voices through our um, Kind of announcement this time so i was very excited along with the fans and also uh hiroyuki take sensei the creator of shaman king was a comic-con guest uh, approximately 10 years ago and i was there with him so in that sense too it was kind of a hope coming and uh, we were so happy to deliver this news particularly at san diego comic-con for that reason mm -hmm. Do you think that the Comic-Con at home, it brought a lot more um, new people to Shaman King? We hope so. I, I mean, I think the, the fact that the panels are so accessible to everybody, I mean, uh, if we were at Comic-Con proper, like maybe we would have be in a panel room that, you know, we're, we're not going to get a whole H room. <laughs> uh, but uh, where we, we'd hope we'd get something that would maybe max out at like above 300 folks. But in terms of the RSVPs that we saw uh, like on the site, it was like easily 600. And then, you know, we know that the access of YouTube like just means everyone everywhere can get a chance to be in on these panels and like really at any time. So, you know, what, what is wonderful is getting to know that, you know, the panel's out and anybody can check it out uh, from here until whenever. Um, so yeah, no, it, it, we definitely think that it's, um, the reach has gotten that much wider uh, mm -hmm. for this news and to like much more uh, fans that may not have known uh, to keep an eye on the manga news for something that they like. Um, I also wanted to add that uh, um, every time I am at a show like Comic-Con, I'm, um, you know, uh, communicating with fans throughout social media as well. And I'm always slightly like heartbroken that not everybody could be there. But this kind of uh, new approach uh, kind of opened up that gate to more like everyone. So um, I, I thought that was very, uh, very nice. Yeah, hopefully there are some, some lessons that get carried forward into the future here because we saw, I saw people on Twitter posting, you know, screenshots of the PowerPoint presentation just like they would if they were in the room. And uh, it's I made a, those much present, larger crowd, yeah. I made those presentation uh, screen grab friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. very smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Can you uh, can you like just give us a an idea about Shaman King and and some background and and um, just introduce it to people that aren't familiar? Yeah, Saki Ben, I'll point to you at this one. 
Yeah, Ben, you want to hit the premise first? Sure. So the premise is uh, there's a teenager uh, and his, his uh, ambition is to become the greatest shaman in the world, the Shaman King. Uh, there's a contest for this. Um, and I mean, ideally, he'd be able to practice and get really good and maybe get a little older first. But this contest is only held once every 500 years. So this is his one shot uh, and he's got to take it. Uh, and he's, of course, acquires friends and um, comrades along the way, uh, including his fiance. And they're happily engaged at the very beginning of the manga, which is pretty unusual and interesting. And <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, she's a great character and it's yeah. an amazing character. I love her. It draws on uh, cult all different cultures from around the world, including Japan's own indigenous shamanistic traditions. There are uh, sh famous Shinto shrines that you can actually go visit in Japan that are depicted in the story, which I think is really cool. And, um, and it's, it's an epic story. I mean, it, like uh, Ivan mentioned, it goes on for over 30 volumes. And in English, in its first go around, it sold 600,000 copies. Uh, but there hasn't been a new book out in the franchise in English since uh, almost 10 years ago. So we're really excited to be able to bring this back uh, in digital and then finally in print. Um, I also wanted to add that um, in the panel, we have revealed uh, the message from the creator, uh, Takei Sensei, and he literally spoke out to the comrades, which are the, the readers and the fans, the new and old fans of Shaman King to kind of unite again and also to kind of see the, the ending that he intended to, um, this is the time to deliver it. So I thought that was a very nice way to kind of have the, the voice of the creator to be heard directly to the fans. It's so interesting that like, you know, movies that are maybe 10 years ago aren't really relative now, but comics are. Yes, uh, I think he, he also grew within those like um, um, a decade or two uh, since the original round of Shaman King. Um, uh, he, he has uh, continued to brush up on his art style too. So it's definitely more modernized and it's actually showcased in every cover of our books uh, from here and on. Um, and also he, he was very ahead of the time for at that time too. He was very, he had like an international um, audience in mind. He tried to make a, a timeless content um, that could be enjoyed at any time uh, of our history. So um, that kind of held up really well um, for the, the last few decades and it almost feels like a brand new content to us. Yeah, there's a new generation that's going to be able to experience this work for the first time, which is also really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, in the, one of the spin-offs too, the, uh, there are the new generation of characters who are like the related to the, uh, the, the people from the original series. And they are definitely carrying their weight as the new generation. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah. And I think at the heart of, of this story and a lot of manga is uh, just really compelling characters. And I think that once you get invested in them, that that adds to the timeless quality because you just want to spend more time with sort of your friends in this book. Um, and so it, it kind of doesn't matter when it was published because mm -hmm. just returning back to them is like returning to something comforting. And I yeah. think that, that that makes people sort of like hold that in their heart, depend like and not matter when it was published, but like yeah. just feeling immediately how you did when you first read it. I think uh, we had a little comment uh, from the Japanese editor and he, he said the same thing too. Like in this series, you at least uh, come across somebody you feel very connected to and that's one of the strengths of this series. To your point about manga in particular uh, being uh, like this and having people come back to it generation after generation, I think it has something to do with the fact that manga is all or nothing compared <laughs> to American comics. I mean. With American comics, you can always you, you you can always depend on a reboot coming up of the whole universe, right? In a couple of years, we'll just sure. reset the reset the world. You know, if we made some mistakes, we'll go back and fix them. For manga, that those opportunities are really really rare if they ever happen at all, and so the author has to put it all in because this is your one shot. Continuity. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you guys would like to add? Um. um so what's it called? Uh, one of the things that we're super excited for, like this Comic-Con, is uh, we, we are nominated for two Eisner Awards. Uh, or, yeah, two of our titles are nominated for Eisner. Um, for folks who are not familiar, uh, the uh, um, 
Will Eisner Comic Industry Awards are basically the Oscars of comics. Um, and uh, we have been uh, nominated for, uh, Ben, uh, you might remember the exact- Which had, one. yeah, uh, no. the U, yeah. Uh, best international edition, best US edition of international material Asia is the category. Boom. Um, yes. Which covers manga and also comics from uh, China and other parts of Asia, mm. but uh, mostly in nominees historically have been manga. Yeah. And uh, the two titles that we have are Which Had Tell You About Kamome Shirahama. Um, and uh, also uh, Magic Knight uh, Ray Earth, uh, the uh, 25th anniversary edition. Yep. Is that yep, the correct? That's right. Yeah. 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 And that was uh, by Clamp, which is a, a you know, much lauded uh, Shoujo creator um, uh, team. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, we're, we're just, we're incredibly happy to be nominated. The picks are really series and titles that, you know, we think that deserve that sort of recognition. Um, and uh, I mean, me personally, like, uh, I think uh, Witch Hat Atelier is, and pardon the pun, magic in so many different kinds of ways. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's the one that I'm rooting for in my heart. Um, but we, we love all of our books. And it'd be our third year, if we win this year, it'd be our third year in a row taking an Eisner. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. The Akira box set two years ago, and then for Tokyo Tara Rebel Girls last year. So that's right. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Wow. Wow, that's a pretty good track record right there. Yeah. I'll be rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you. What, is the, what does the trophy look like? Um, do you, it's a, it's do like you want to see? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you have it? Oh, you've got one handy? I have one, yeah. One <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that's really fantastic. happy that like we can do things like Eisner Awards and uh, Comic-Con, even through the uh, virtual environment, too, because we're, we're kind of in like a, oh, there it is. <laughs> Yeah. That's dope. Right on. 2018. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, I, I helped out on a on a book that uh, won in 2018. Uh, funny enough, this club spin. Oh. <laughs> you got you got to tighten that screw on the top there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, I keep thinking of getting a chain for it, so I could just like wear it around. <laughs> Bling. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Oh. Well, that's great. Thank you for your time. I'm Chris Mara at Comic Con at Home, and we miss you, and we'll see you soon. Miss we you miss you too. too. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Thank Greg. You. Thank you.